You're First point. question, who's, who takes the hot seat? I think you answered my question earlier about your plans for going forward with that. You know, why did you think about buying it? Why did we think about buying Big Switch? Number one was cultural alignment. It's a team that we had tremendous respect for the work they've done. They looked at the market differently than we did. And some days you, you look at problems like this and you're like, you know, should I, do I want to buy a company which, ha which has, you know, a hundred and some people that think exactly like we do about some things, certainly quality, how they take care of their customers, what their core principles are. But they had some very different points of view about SDN and systems architectures and the type of problems they were solving. Those complement us very well. I think they make us better. When we sit in a room, someone said earlier today, if, if I'm sitting in a room with three other people and they all agree with me, it was probably a waste of time. And so having people with a different point of view and a different perspective will make us a better company for our clients. Anybody else? I really like the technical fit, technical architecture, the state orientation, the idea of having all of the state in one place then associate with the devices and then affect policy change, configuration change, behavior change through state updates. Um, is, a, is just a very good fit for the, the same architecture as Cloud Vision, same architecture as EOS internally, and also the, the uh, MWM Mobile Wireless Manager for Mojo uh, all share those architectural principles. That was important to me that we have that kind of coherence around the architectural vision. And, you know, I think we alluded to it in one of the earlier slides, uh, but the, from a product perspective, Arista had, you know, the, this dance functionality, the tap bag use cases. We were, you know, we, leveraging the common infrastructure, the common platforms, common EOS. And but what we had really been doing was kind of building features that were a little bit more, uh, you know, focused. We were taking advantage of, you know, hardware PTP and the density of our systems and these sort of things. We didn't take it to the second and third phase of what you really need for a monitoring solution. And so to take you know, this idea that the, the big monitoring fabric type approach uh, and just basically plug it in to our universal cloud network and all of our products, as, as, as Prashant showed, is, is a huge win uh, in terms of the, you know, the build versus buy. I mean, it take it a long time to, to build out what the Big Switch team has built. I have a question. Um, a lot of discussion has happened around the monitoring capabilities of Big Switch, but they also have the SDN controller and they are known for the open flow so I want to ask generally like you know uh, maybe from the big switch is that have you seen the market traction for the open flow success stories with the customers how uh, because you know it's been some people say that open flow has failed you know you want to hear from you basically you know <laughs> well um, Open. Um, you know, seven years ago, I believe seven, six years ago, 2013, February, we had this session. And uh, OpenFlow was hot. And I opened my big mouth. <laughs> I was there. Do you remember? I was there. Do you remember? I do. And I had said, OpenFlow is fantasy. Is what? It's fantasy. OK. Because. Any, you know, if you're a networking professional, you could see all the, the, the issues it would have running a production, scalable, resilient network, right? So when we joined Big Switch, we got rid of OpenFlow. And we built solutions that would use normal networking principles. But focus on bounding the complexity with software externally to the system, right? Not just on the uh, embedded, as an embedded software, but external to the software and, uh, uh, you know, bound that complexity. And that's uh, the solution. So as Anshul said, Doug said, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, switching fabric product is really focused on converged systems where uh, it does best when it is integrated with Nutanix Hyperconverge. It's VMware, NSX, or VxRail and uh, really automates. Um, so it does you know, a set of things. So if you want to do very flexible things, do a lot of custom things, then th that requires 
you know, uh, 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 how you would build data centers using, for example, Arista products, right? Um, but if you want to do very specifically, you know, have an automated infrastructure for hyperconverge and, and use cases like that, then the BigSwitch solution <coughs> works uh, really well. And, and so the approach, as uh, Anshu showed, you know, there is the um, solution for Cloud Titans, which uh, Arista has done super well. Then there is a solution for Cloud Class, which is for the enterprises, bringing cloud experience to, to enterprises. And we see the monitoring product as a fantastic complementary to, to that um, solution. And the third is Converge uh, systems or Converge clouds. And this is where you have the hyperconverge environment, Converge systems, where it makes a ton of sense for that motion to occur with our tech partners like Dell. And, um, and we have Mavineers uh, for, for service provider NFV solution. And so, so that's where the Big Cloud Fabric product is positioned and will continue to be developed and sold through, through our partners on, um, on open networking hardware. Um, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Carl. Uh, I had a question. Um, for those of us who have Big Switch deployed on non-Arista hardware, are we still going to be able to deploy Big Switch on non-Arista hardware, or is this going to be a package deal now? Uh, we're going to continue to develop, sell, and support the big monitoring fabric and the big cloud fabric. Uh, we're going to continue to support the hardware partners we've supported to date on it. We're going to continue to support the same distributors and resellers and OEMs that have been getting it to market. We're going to continue to support them as well. So if you're an existing Big Switch customer, please stay an existing Big Switch customer. Absolutely. I want to add to that that we sell EOS on non-Arista hardware as well. We support like 13 white boxes or something now, and we'll support more if there's customer demand for that. So we're not hung up on, on uh, our own hardware. Although it is really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the hardware team's not here, but they do such a good job. Uh, whether, Carl? So it's great that you guys you know, do support you know, additional platforms, but it, you know, long term, it's probably not generally not viable to have two different network operating systems that are in the market that, frankly, are kind of competing against each other. They they run you know the the for like a big cloud fabric, uh, and then the and EOS and the data center and the cloud. Those are kind of two two solutions I think to the same problem. I think there is a potential for longer term integration between those, but we want to be very, very clear. We are absolutely continuing to support the multiple hardware vendors. We're absolutely continuing to support the you know, open networking interfaces there. We're going to continue to support the same distributors and partners as long as they continue to support us. And a great example of that is I go back to what Anshul put up on the work we're doing with Sonic. There's probably more Sonic running on Arista than any other hardware platform in the world, and I'd bet by an order of magnitude. That means we're already supporting another open operating system running on our hardware. Why not support that same OS with our management infrastructure and, again, allow our customers to have that choice? If we are the company that tries to lock our customers in, bluntly, we're doing what our competition does. If we're the company that says, yeah, we build hardware and we think it's really awesome and we build management systems and they're great and we build an OS and we're damn proud of it, but we're going to support other OSs and other hardware, and as Fred showed, other management systems. We've talked about multiple OSs, multiple management systems, and multiple hardware up here today. We put multi-vendor up as a core principle we adhere to. We have to adhere to that. If you see us straying from that, you're gonna see us acting like our competition, and that's not why people have chosen to work with us. Fred? <laughs> we got 20 seconds left. <laughs> No, I mean, I think that was key to, to some of the stuff I was showing. Maybe it didn't come out directly, but yeah, I think we wanted to make sure that we showed Ansible integrating with Cloud Vision and, and all these other tools integrating with Cloud Vision and EOS. We don't, we, we love Cloud Vision. It does amazing things, but we think we can augment that with a bunch of other really awesome tools that are out there. How we time for one last question? Yep, one more. I guess the final one is the Canadian Dream. 
<laughs> Question of what was the... It's some amazing stuff. <laughs> there was awesome a... Softball look. I actually don't have any questions right now. I just want to thank you guys for um, a really... It was like... It was a great presentation. I could feel your passion come through, but I also appreciate and respected that you were honest. So I thought it was a great presentation. Yeah, yeah, the question. There was a question of what was the NFV solution that was being mentioned or integrating on the hypervisor level? Uh, no, what I meant to say is we have uh, Big Switch uh, uh, and continues with Arista uh, has an OEM partnership with Mavenir and they built an NFV solution. They, they have their own virtual network functions and the Big Switch uh, solution is is uh, sold along with that converge system. So, so th in that case, the example is an NFB converge system uh, through Mavenir, for example. No, the answer is it.